This is an egg. This is a parts per million counter. I could apply this technology and I could perform a practical scientific experiment where I could measure the density of a medium, in this case water, and I can make this egg move. Well hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Who amongst us can forget this example of flat earth comedy known as Sleeping Warrior and the infamous floating egg? Today we're going to have a look at his experiment and see where he went wrong. And then we're going to get ready to do it correctly this Friday. So I hope you'll tune into both and let's review. My hypothesis is if I change the medium's density, the egg will move. Newton said, if an object moves, a force is present. Well, you're off to a pretty decent start, Anthony, but let me just clear some things up. You see, if you had actually earned that white coat, as I did, instead of just picked it up, you'd also know that Newton said that force is mass times acceleration. Now, you've got mass in the egg, but where's your acceleration going to come from? And by the way, you don't use a parts per million meter to measure density. You use a hydrometer like that. My independent variable, my presumed cause that I must manipulate in an experiment. Well, I'm sorry, Anthony, but I'm going to have to go ahead and stop you there for just a moment. An independent variable is that variable that changes. The effect of that change is measured upon the dependent variable. There's no requirement as to who personally changes the independent variable. And since time is an independent variable in many cases, by definition, the researcher can't physically change time. But they can vary the amount of time that passes and see the effect of that variation on the dependent variable. That's where you're kind of blowing this whole concept of the independent and the dependent variable. But carry on. Is the density of the medium. My dependent variable is the movement of the egg. I'll also try and keep everything else constant. The volumes of water, not no change, just the density of the medium. This is my egg. This is my parts per million counter. And that is my egg and my hydrometer to measure the specific gravity and density. This is going to measure the parts per million of both these fluids. This is tap water, regular tap water. That is the same tap water, but it's been preloaded to save some time with some salt from this to give it a density variation. It's going to measure the density of the, the tap water. So while it settles down, it takes a little bit of time. Okay, that's coming in at 212 parts per million tap water. Don't know what that means. It's just a number. It could be unicorn farts. It's just a tap. It's just a number. No, Anthony. A parts per million meter measures parts per million dissolved solids. If you want to measure the density, you have to measure the mass of the object and divide it by the volume. Alternatively, you could use something for a fluid like a hydrometer, which measures the specific gravity. Specific gravity has no units. It is the density of the fluid divided by the density of water. All the units cancel out but you can determine density from it. You know, I would think that if your entire experiment depended on a change in density, you might want to actually measure the density. Don't you think? So 212 is the recorded density of this one. Mind you, I should have showed that to the camera, shouldn't I? It's going in at 214 now. So if you, if you want to zoom in on that, it says 214 parts per million. Okay. back to zero. When I do it to this one, this one is saying this is 302 parts per million. That tells me that there is a density variation between the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when this egg is dropped into here. It sinks and it's touching the floor. Now we'll see what happens when we put it into a more dense medium. So whilst I was settling down, this was done last night, 
because it takes ages for it to dissolve and it um, get to a point where it's saturated. And I've got some residue at the bottom that is salt. Um, so at the bottom at least it's getting relatively saturated. So I'm going to give it a stir to stir it up so that the uh, it evenly distributes a little bit better. Because what I'm hoping to do is get the egg so that it's just sat above the bottom of the thing. Some people will argue and complain and say that I've not, I shouldn't have stirred it, I should have left it as a gradient. It doesn't really matter. Because what we're trying to establish is, if the medium is different, does it make a displacement? Does it force a displacement? If it forces a displacement, according to Newton, there is force. This is just normal table salt from your favourite supermarket. Other supermarkets are available. We can tell that the density of the egg is equal to the part in the glass where the, the liquid is. What I'm now going to try and prove is that if I change the density of the medium, I will cause the, the uh, effect by adding salt. So if I can change it, because I'm manipulating, I'm the experimenter and I'm manipulating my presumed cause, my independent variable is the medium, if that egg moves, I've caused it. We know the parts per million is about 300. All we need to do is pour some of this in. Hey, what do you know? The egg's immediately moved. Well, Anthony, you remember that pesky little second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration? You've demonstrated a change in mass, but you still haven't accounted for the acceleration. Are you planning on doing that sometime soon? So the density's reading around about 309, 308, 309. But I've just made the egg move. So what's the cause? Well, scientific method states that the independent variable is the presumed cause. And I presumed that changing the density of the liquid would, with salt would cause a displacement. You know, Anthony, scientific method has another little part to it. It's understanding what you're trying to test for. You did indeed change the salt content of that water by pouring salt in it. You don't know what the density is because you didn't measure it. You're presuming it's the density, and it's probably a pretty good guess, but you haven't measured it. Second of all, you haven't figured out why the density resulted in an acceleration. That's an unanswered question. I could put food color in there and say that the egg didn't move, so therefore food color stops all motion. You have to test for the correct variable and understand why you're testing for that variable. So let's continue. Newton's first law of motion states that um, every object will remain at rest unless acted upon by a force. And I've obviously created a force. The density of the medium has displaced the egg. The egg moved. That's an accelerating mass. So therefore, Newton states that there is a force. I caused it with this. So in scientific, in scientific method, the cause of the displacement is this. I've caused it. I've manipulated it, I added the salt, it caused something. I did it, I'm within scientific method. Okay, Anthony, let's go ahead and recap what you've done so far. You dumped some salt in water, therefore presumably changing the density of that water and managed to float an egg. You did correctly observe an egg move, and your assertion that a force must be in, in play is tenable. It's very reasonable. Now the next question that you have is, what is this force? We know that it is acting on the mass of the egg, so it has to be an acceleration of some sort. Where is the acceleration that you obtained by changing density? Acceleration is in meters per second. Density is in grams per cubic centimeter, or thereabouts. So where is the meters per second. So where is this acceleration coming from? You haven't made any suggestion as to that. All you did was dump salt in water and watched an egg move. You have no idea why it moved. You can draw no conclusions as to why it moved other than some force is acting on it. But you haven't established what that force is. If you assert that gravity in any way caused something in this experiment, 
That means you are adding a secondary cause. Adding by inference. If you add a secondary cause by inference, you fall outside of scientific method because you can't infer an extra cause when you've already got one that you've manipulated. You can't infer a secondary cause and remain in sci within scientific method. If you wish to move outside of scientific method, sure, be my guest. Infer that gravity caused in any way whatsoever the effect that we just witnessed, which was the egg moving. But you do so outside of scientific method. And we know by definition, if you are not complying with scientific method, you are practicing pseudoscience. So the second half of this is when you are questioned by people who actually do have a science background, you listen to what they say and maybe you retest some of the suggestions that they have. For example, our suggestion was that no, it's not relative density, it's buoyancy. And buoyancy gets its force and its acceleration from the effects of gravity on a mass. All right, this is well known. It's called Archimedes' Law and Archimedes' Principle. So, rather than try and wing this thing here and just make a wild claim that it's relative density, why don't you check it with and without gravity? Now, how would you do that? I suggest you review the Cavendish experiment to figure out how to offset the effects of gravity on the surface of the Earth. Now, let me give you a little hint. Have a look at my test equipment. So here we have a precision scale, which is calibrated to a reference weight. We have some salt. We also have some sugar. We have an egg, and we have a hydrometer. This is the way you would properly do the experiment where you float an egg. But there's one other thing you might want to have a look at and wonder why I included it. Now, what's Bob the science guy doing with this? Wouldn't you like to know? Tune in on Friday and you'll find out. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. And I'll see you on Friday for the second half of this.